the dances that we used to have were really popular and one of the spots was the Africa Centre in Covent Garden. And it wasn't a very big venue, but there were so many people who'd want to come and see what was going on, particularly on um, bank holiday weekends. And um, there, there were, on more than one occasion, it was so ram in there and the vibes were so nice that I asked the people who were inside, who had already paid their money, if they would mind leaving early so that the other people outside could come in. And they fucking did it. Like, half of the club left and allowed the other people to come in. I kind of feel bad about it because we charged them, but it was, you know, it was that weird at the time. Could you imagine now saying to anybody, you already paid your money, you've only been in there for two hours, can you leave and let someone else in? You'd want a refund, right? Nah, they didn't want a refund. Mm -hmm. And um, this started to become the norm on a bank holiday when we were at the AC. And, and I think things like that, where I talk about, you know, when the sound system had the backs to the crowd, Soul to Soul became inclusive. Mm -hmm. So this is why ideas like this could work. We, 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 were, we were a people sound. So a lot of the things we were looking at the audience and, you know, uh, meeting their needs. So, you know, particularly if there were a lot of guys who were dancing on that particular week, we would play what we call fling foot, where we play more music that people could dance to. If, if the dance was really packed and tight, we would just play like what we call the champion tunes, you know, what, what people would, you know, whatever. If there were times where it was a, a mix of the two, that's when we would break tracks. So we would break whatever the tune was that we wanted to, s that we had too many pressings of. So we'd play that like four times in the night and then people would come and want to buy it and stuff like that. So, you know, there was ways of us doing things, but those stories are really real. You know, people coming to the dance, losing stuff in the dance and um, they'd, I'd announce it on the microphone and 10 minutes later, your laptop was back. You know, people would lose. We used to have these little Walkmans. They were a popular thing in those days, like I guess MP3s, and people would just put them down and then somebody would lose it. And then they'd say, oh, you know, we've lost our eyes. Right? Somebody's stolen our tape machine or whatever. You would announce it on the mic, 10 minutes later, it would, it would be there. And for me, the, um, in the early days, that's the whole idea of the inclusiveness and, and, and the kind of vibes what people had, and that's how new it was to us. So we were very much a community that was, um, let's say looking out for each other, but very interested in that sort of philosophy where it was a bit hippie idea, but again, we were being very enterprising too. So uh, was that the apex of that sense of community at the Africa Center when you were doing the things there? And explain, I guess, a little bit about what, what that Africa Center is. And yeah, I mean, we, we often described Africa Center as the center of the world because it was a backlash towards all the warehouse parties as well. And particularly the type of music that we were playing, the, the type of people that were coming there, that was everybody who, who, it was a real scene. It was a scene. And from a scene is where the, the music, the styles would thrive from. I mean, now you have it with dubstep, it's a scene. You had the same thing with jungle or drum and bass. It was a scene. And but, so the, but the place itself was a cultural center. Yeah, it, wasn't, the, it wasn't a club, right? No, the Africa it. Center was actually a refugee place. It was, <laughs> strangely enough, supported by the church. It was a refugee. If you look up the Africa Center, and, and you'll find out, it, it's, a, it's a place that was done by, uh, as for refugees to come and mingle. And there was the Calabash Center which sell food and a lot of artwork and stuff like that. It's in the middle of town as well. So it's a really interesting place. So for anything of, of the ideas that we were doing, it was a really suitable venue for, for everything. So we got away with literally murder in there. <laughs> 